national event winner. We'll let a few folks jump in here. Right on. Why does it take mine forever? I don't know. Yeah, it's already folks just piling right on in here. <laughs> always, always laugh because uh, way back when uh, they did the the tracks of shootout and they had voting. You, I said, hey man, can you post this for me? And and you sent back Murder Nobook and Facebook, and it can yeah. Murder Nobook yeah. and Facebook. No sure. doubt, no doubt. So everybody, uh, obviously tonight. The, uh, the the old DNC show. I got my buddy Sean Ellington on here with me, and just going to. I just got to ask this right off the get go. So the name of your car is Murder Nova. Yep. People nonstop call you Murder Nova. Does that, does that irritate you? I mean, no, does that, not at all. Weird? I mean, that, that's how they relate to me. You know, I mean, it's. I don't know. Sean is pretty personal whenever you use somebody's first name. So I'm cool with it. It, it doesn't matter. I, I answer to pretty much anything. I've been called a lot worse. I promise you that. So it, it's not a big deal to me. I, I know who they're talking to, you know, so. Right. Yeah, that car has definitely kind of took on actually both cars now. I've took on like a life of their own. I mean, that is just nuts. For Where sure. that car has taken you. You know, it's crazy. Yeah, for sure. And it's one of those deals where I'm not going to correct somebody if they are talking to me and they say murder Nova, you know, we know that it's the car that everybody loves, you know, so I'm cool with it, you know, it is what it is, you know, every time I take the car out, it does cool things, you know, so I can't take the credit for everything. Oh man, but I, I tell you what, y'all have done some, some pretty cool things. And so, so the, I actually, I mean, you've known each other a pretty long time now, but I actually Googled, I've been trying to like, you know, properly have some questions to ask this, that, and other. So I Googled and you was you were born in Merced, California. I was. Yeah. So and, and you left there when you were like five years old. Is yeah. Right? Five or six. I'm pretty sure that my parents came out to Oklahoma, uh, you know, when the oil boom was big. So yeah, so I, that was gonna be my question. How did I know your dad runs a body shop and does a lot of cool painting and stuff, but so is that what brought him from California to move the whole family out to Oklahoma? Well, I think it was more my mom's family. My mom's family uh, lived in Sayre. Uh, my grandpa graduated from Sayre, you know, the little town out in Western Oklahoma. And they moved to California. And then whenever all the oil boom hit and all that stuff, they ended up moving back out here. And whenever they did that, my mom followed them. So that's, that's, this is where we came. That's awesome. So, Sarah, Oklahoma is that is that where they do the, like the the street race that's like part of some it little is. festival of the year? It is. It is. They got uh, just outside of town there. They have a. Uh, I don't even know how long it is. It's not very long, but it, but Sarah's Sarah's always been a pretty big car town, you know, and that's probably part of the reason I'm the way that I am. You know, it's they've always been pretty lenient. You know, it's a it's it's a small enough town. It's got one stoplight. And, uh, you know, we raised hell when we were growing up, you know, and it didn't matter what we were doing. We were doing burnout somewhere, you know, and it's just uh, I wasn't the only idiot from that town doing it. You know, everybody was. So, so uh, it didn't really surprise me once they stepped into and, and you know, all the small towns started doing the, the little races. And it didn't surprise me at all once they did it. You know, there's there was there's quite a bit of oil field money out in western Oklahoma and uh, guys that can't make it up here to the tracks there there's not a track anywhere around there you know oklahoma city's the closest one so you're two and a half hours away from from anything so whenever you can let those guys give those guys a, a safe and a, a legal environment to do that in you know they're going to come out of the woodworks to do it you know it might be old farm trucks and and stuff that uh, you don't actually see at the at the racetrack but it's it's their own thing that they're doing you know and you got to love it so how old were you when you left Sarah and moved to Oklahoma City? 
where you're at now. I graduated, I graduated from there. So I was uh, 20, 21 whenever I left there. So did a, a job get you to move or, or what, what prompted the move? A small town life just wasn't for me. You know, I mean, it's there's there's without saying too much bad about Sarah, there's there's only a couple of things that you can do there. And one of them ends in jail and then the other one doesn't end in success. You know, so it was, uh, you know, and I can't farm. So it's uh, one of one of those deals where I just thought it was best for me to get out. Right, right, right. So you moved to to Oklahoma City area. What, what were you what was your job? What were you doing? I had a power line company then, so it didn't really matter where I lived. I, I, I worked on the road anyways. So basically, uh, we were contractors for, you know, co-ops and stuff all around Oklahoma. We went and hit uh, all the hurricanes, ice, storms. you know, we hit as much stuff as we possibly could. So I had a really good job. And I mean, most people think, you know, that Discovery bought me everything that I have. And it's not true. You know, I, I had quite a bit of stuff before all of this came along. And it was something to take my mind away from my job. And that's the reason I got into racing. Uh, the, the job that I did building power line, it, it's it's a, a bad day at my job and somebody could die, you know. So I had a whole lot on my mind. I, I, I ran, you know, I was a general foreman over three, two, two, sometimes three crews. And it's a lot of stress, you know, so eventually, uh, you know, we'd work four days a week. Uh, so wherever we were, I would be gone from home. I would come home uh, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And, uh, you know, since I pretty much ran things out in the field, I, I could stay home a little bit longer than that if I wanted to, you know. And uh, I got into racing to take my mind off of it. You know, it's it's uh, when you go through some of the stuff at work that I've been through, you know, it causes, you know, I, I still have nightmares. You know, there's just. There, there's a, it gets in your blood and I miss it a lot, but it's also a lot of stress building power line. Oh, I, I can only imagine taking wire yeah. from that high up and all the craziness that's going with that. That's for sure. I can't imagine. I'd be yeah. If somebody ever got hurt, you know, it was, it was always on me. I was the guy, you know, I'm the guy who's supposed to be keeping everybody safe out there. I'm the guy who's supposed to be teaching everybody, you know, so it, it was a lot, you know. So what, at what point, or I guess really the question is, what was the first car you kind of like really started, like you was talking about Sarah doing burnouts and this, that, and other. What kind of car did you have back then? Um, I didn't have anything fast, but my dad always had Mustangs, you know, and, and Mustangs will do a burnout just as good as anybody, you know, if you can keep them on the road. But uh, my first truck was actually a 67 Chevy you know, a truck and, you know, it was loud, had straight pipes on it. It wasn't fast at all, but you know, it was a standard and I could pop the clutch with the best of them. Right. So, right. but the, the first thing that, that I really started racing was me and my dad uh, fixed up a 69 Camaro and my dad having a body shop, I was more of a car show guy and I would, I, we'd go to car shows all the time. So dad always uh, fixed up cars and they'd at least have really nice paint jobs on them. Uh, not so much uh, interior, you know, he didn't do a whole lot of interior, but, but the paint jobs were really nice and we would go to car shows. So once we started building this 69 Camaro, I built it more for show at first than, than anything. And I was still actually living in Sarah at the time. Well, I got the car about three quarters of the way done about the time that I moved up to Oklahoma city. And, uh, it had a, just a small roots blower on it at the time. And, uh, I remember the first time I brought the car out, uh, we went over to 39th street and we were, we were dragging. And that's whenever, uh, I met all the 405 guys for the first time, you know, I didn't know who they were, but I know that I followed all of them out to a race spot. And, uh, this was just a 10, five tire deal. Uh, most of the cars back then were all small tire and, uh, car was still primer, but everything underneath, you know, was, was, was pretty nice. You know, I had a good baseline. It had a big block, had a 509 big block Chevy in it with a, uh, like a 177 blower on it. Uh, it had like a, a nine inch curry rear end in it, you know, and, and, uh, I, 
I went race car with it, but it was more for show than it was go. And uh, so anyways, I, I know that uh, Chief was setting up races and he set up a race for me and I outran the guy that I was racing and got a $500 ticket in the process of that deal. So the first street race I ever got into in Oklahoma City ended up getting a $500 uh, competition, speed competition ticket is what they called it. So which is the same thing, same thing as reckless driving. <laughs> well, I'm a bounce all over the place here, and and I know you got you got you got your, your little man there that ain't so little no more. I know Aiden is close by, and before we went live, I told you that I am having a blast watching your new YouTube channel, and you and Aiden, your son Aiden, building yeah. a car, and I am I, I'm telling you, I'm just absolutely loving it. The uh, I just popped the Chevelle up there right quick. Everybody can see that. Nice job. <laughs> that is the first time I've ever tried that while doing this. It worked like a dream. Worked like a dream. And like you said, it's CNN, Country Boy News. That's what we yeah, got going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're having a blast doing it. It's one of those deals where, it, uh, since all this Corona stuff happened, you know, we're 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 still out in the shop every day. We're still doing our our lives haven't changed a whole lot, except we can't go anywhere. So we basically have to stay at home. And if my son can't, you know, he's really big into sports, you know, and I'm all for that. Uh, I, I was really into sports all through high school and even in college. And it, as long as he is in sports, I'm not going to be on him about getting down here in the shop and, and learning a whole lot. You know, I, I'm cool with him working out and and playing sports and all that stuff. Uh, but whenever he's done doing that, you know, Hopefully it'll be a while before he's done doing that. Then he can come play with me in the shop. You know, I, I don't want to rush that deal. Uh, I would love to see him go play college ball somewhere. You know, that, that'd be like my dream, you know? So every opportunity that I can give him to go and do that and to, to play sports and, and uh, he has a personal trainer that he goes to. And, you know, so he's really big into that. Well, so that doesn't give us a whole lot of time to do anything. Well, once this Corona stuff happened, all that stopped, yeah. like just boom, it was, it was done. So, you know, he's not going to sit in the house and, and uh, play Fortnite all day long. You know what I mean? So now, now he only plays it, you know, half a day, you know, and then stays up till two o'clock in the morning playing it, you know, which I can't complain too much because I do too. You know, I, I'm, I'm a gamer. I, I play games a lot, but now that we've kind of got him out in the shop and we've been working on his Chevelle, man, it's uh, he, he's come a long ways in, in the few couple of months that we've been out here doing it, you know, and, and, it, and it's fun. And and the more he learns working on his own car, the more he can help me on my car. So, you know, I mean, my, my dad's getting a little bit older and he, he's not going to be able to help do everything that he does forever. You know what I mean? So hopefully Aiden can step into his spot. Well, I tell you what, I've been impressed. And again, we were talking about this before we went live. It reminds me so much of working with Dalton because kids strong and all that, but they don't quite know how to operate wrenches. You know, like we were talking about loosening bolts up, you know, mm -hmm. old guys like me and you that have been doing it forever. It's like, you know, put the wrench on a certain way, grab it here and pull it towards you or whatever the case may be. But I can see him getting frustrated with you for telling him how to do it, but you're just trying to teach him. Me and Dalton would butt heads like crazy, yep. you know? And so that gets a little tough sometimes working with your kid, but I'm telling you, I, I'm, I'm loving the build that y'all are doing and, and love seeing y'all working together. That's just really awesome. Yeah. Well, I, I feel like uh, the, the butting of heads is definitely going to get worse when it comes to Aiden, because right now he's, he realizes that he doesn't know a whole lot in the shop. He thinks he knows everything everywhere else. But as, as as far as the shop goes, he realizes he doesn't know a whole lot. But you give him six months out here, he's going to start thinking he's smarter than me at this too, just like he does everything else. And, and we're going to start butting heads, you know. But part of it, you know, uh, one, one thing that I really enjoy is being around, uh, and I know he's friends of yours too, is Jeff Lutz. And when you're around Jeff Lutz and Jeff Jr., it is amazing. They butt heads and it's so funny. You know, they're, they're both extremely talented. And yes. Yes. Jeffrey is, I'm not going to say he's every bit as talented as Jeff, but he's good. Like he, 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 really he good. could build a whole car from the ground up, but then you yes. hear Lutz yell at him about something 
And Jeffrey's not cool with him yelling about what he's yelling at. So then Jeffrey yells back at him, you know, and it, I can just see that that's the relationship that, it, that me and Aiden are on our way towards. So, yeah, Jeff and Jeffrey are amazing. I, I've went up there, you know, they're, they're working on a project for me, which we're still kind of keeping it hidden or whatever, but you know, mm -hmm. we stopped in the truck and we've kind of lost our mind and, and Jeff and Jeffrey both are, are encouraging that this thing just keeps growing, but, yeah. But it's so fun to work with those guys while, well, yeah, they'll bicker some, but holy moly, can they get stuff done in a hurry? No like doubt. Folks no do doubt. What they, do, they, they can, they they can work out. And Definitely. what good people they are. They, they're both some of my best buddies. They're, they're unreal. They are unreal. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. You know, this, this whole journey that we have been through, we have, uh, we've met a lot of people and, there's few that I've met that I can actually consider friends, you know, and, and, and he's one of them, you know, so that's, it, it, it'll be a lifetime friendship. You know what I mean? I may not talk to him once a week. I may not talk to him once a month, but when we do talk, it's just like we never left off, you know, yep. same thing with you, you know, oh, yeah. we, we can not talk for six months and then just pick right back up where we were, you know, oh, and yeah. that's, that's, that's something special, you know, that's for sure. So one one eight seven customs. Aiden, get over here. Yep. Is Aiden there? Is Aiden still there? He is. He is. He's there. Come here. Sit down. Just sit down. Sit down. You, you can, can sit there in this chair. I'm trying to scoot for? back just a little bit so that you can see. See, this is what I'm talking about. Okay. What's up, buddy? Yeah. I can. Uh, <laughs> Good Lord, Aiden, you have grown since the last time I seen you at the racetrack. How big are you now? I'm five ten. He's a big boy, that's for sure. Five ten at, at what? One hundred and forty or something. So he's he's full, for sure, you know. But you know, you still got to remember, you know, even though he's full grown man, he's still fourteen. So <laughs> I expect a whole lot out of him. And there's even even I shouldn't expect from him, you know, because he's never done it before. But I expect a lot from him. Well, he Aiden, does pretty well. Aiden, I'll tell you what. Like, I know you heard me talking about it. I loved your Chevelle and kind of what's what's the next plans for your Chevelle? Y'all put a put a new motor in it. You put stainless works exhaust on it. Y'all done a little transmission work. What's next? I don't tell know. Them what, tell them what we did with the, the rear and the suspension and, and all that. Well, they haven't seen any of that yet. That's not on. Yeah. I mean, I all, we, all we did was uh, – Take out the transmission, put in a new one. We ordered some. The rear end. He knows that we took the transmission out. Tell him what oh, we no. did. This is yeah, I meant to say end. the rear end, my bad. Yeah. We took the rear end out, put brand new suspension in the back, and then we took it to the track. And now, hopefully, tomorrow we're going to put all the front suspension in and all that. So, so this, this car is just bone stock whenever we got it. And we actually found it in – it's kind of a barn find. It was uh, – it was in somebody's backyard in the middle of town in their backyard. And they had built a, a little uh, shack shed around it. Uh, it was mud floors. Uh, they had it up on uh, jack stands, you know, uh, bricks. And the car hadn't been tagged since, what, 92, 93? 92, 93, something like that. And uh, it was the guy's wife's car. And they drove the car from California to here. And he said that his wife had passed away. And whenever she did, he never drove it again since then. But he used to go out he said, once a week and sit with the car and he would let it run and idle uh, for about 30 minutes, at least once a week, you know. And so whenever we bought it, he had just passed himself and his family was looking to, uh, you know, funeral arrangements and stuff like that. And uh, they were talking about two thousand dollars or something like that and the granddaughter was like no 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 let me put it up for five thousand and just see what happens well my wife texted it to me and this was just right a day or two before we went to bristol uh at the big race down there and and so my wife texted it to me and i was like go get it you know let her know let her know we're on our way and so aaron aaron messaged her and said hey we're hooking up to the trailer right now we're on on our way and i know that before we even got there they had to take it offline because they were getting so many calls on it so wow 
it, like I wasn't even going to try to talk them down at all. I, I handed them the money and, and we actually had to pull the barn down to get it out and then pull uh, the fence apart to get it out of the backyard. So it's, it's a really solid car, but everything is from, you know, everything is original on it. So we, we, we called QA1 and we got all the suspension parts. This is just to kind of fill you in to, to what we haven't put online yet. We got QA1 front and rear suspension and quick performance sent us a nine inch for the rear. So we actually got the nine inch and all the rear suspension put on it last week. And he actually took it to the track since then. And it was, it was too fast before. Well, we put a real loose pro torque in it, real loose. Uh, we wanted something that he was going to blow through the converter a little bit, you know, cause we knew that the motor was going to make too much power and, and being 14 years old, he can only go nine Oh uh, to the eighth. So, and the first time we ever took it to the track, it runs a 12, 50 something, something like that. at 53 mile an hour. So after, after we put the new motor in it and new transmission and that's it, new motor and transmission and exhaust, just blowing through the converter, it went four seconds faster and 30 mile an hour faster. So it, it ran at 877, uh, 81, 81, 82 mile an hour, something like that. So we knew as soon as we put the new rear end in it, that it was going to tighten the converter up and make it a lot faster. You know, so we ended up uh, unhooking the the rear two barrels on the carburetor. We took four degrees of timing out of this deal, and it still went 880s at 79, 80 mile an hour. So it, the, the rear end, putting the, the gear in it that we put in it, we, we went with a 373, but the stock was like the 307s or something. So it's just blowing through the converter. It's a little bit better now, but it's still blowing through the converter, and so now we're still going to have to turn it down from that. Wow, that is that is so cool. So, Aiden, what, what's your plans for, for painting it? I know Grandpa's a good painter. We, we didn't talk about that. Are you going to go like opposite of uh, the flat black, like the, the Burger Nova set behind you back there? What's, what's your idea there? Of course. I want that. Definitely, I want black. definitely. He, he, he's, he's already the type of kid where he, he's not going to live in my shadow. That's not going to happen. He, he's trying to outshine me. <laughs> Perfect. I love it. I, that sounds yeah. familiar. Sounds yeah. familiar. Yeah. That's for sure. Oh, definitely. So, Aiden, so, before, before I let you go, because I know you just got back from baseball practice, so you play baseball and you play hockey. I got to tell the truth. I do not know how hockey works. I don't understand, you know, red line, blue line. I, I don't understand it at all. But mm – -hmm. Is it is it as rough a game as what it looks? Because anytime I ever see hockey, it's just like you know fighting. Is is that really how hockey is? I mean, I'm being serious. No. You don't watch hockey, and I don't know. Not from my league, not, from my league, but, um, not at his year. age. Yeah, not my not my age. But what, I'm going into high school next year, and checking and hitting is allowed. So hopefully, I don't get. So up till league. now, he's been one of the biggest kids out there. Well, next year he's got to step up to the high school team. So he's going to. Uh, I hope he gets laid out quite a few times. I, I won't be upset about it because <laughs> and, and, and oh, at least checking it isn't is you know it's, it's really frowned upon you know and and he gets put in the penalty box a lot you know but next year it's almost like it's encouraged you know and and before we started this whole hockey journey. I didn't know a thing about hockey. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm the dad that's just yelling, skate, skate. That's all I know to tell him. You know, I, I don't know any of the rules. I don't know, you know, like you said, I don't know the red line or the blue lines. You know, I do now. I'm starting to uh, get into it a lot more than what I thought that I would. You know, I was – we we initially got him involved in it because it was the off season, you know, and, and while you're not playing baseball, you're going to do something to stay in shape. And it definitely keeps you in shape. You wouldn't think that uh, being that cold in there and you're not really running, you're just skating. But I've never seen him so sweaty while walking out of there as what he does playing hockey. So it's definitely it's, it's good to keep him in shape. And and that's really all it was going to be. And now we've kind of grown to love it. And uh, I, I hope he sticks with it. It looks it just looks crazy to me. Like I said, I don't understand it. Don't watch it. But. 
but because I follow y'all on social media, I knew you were doing it. And I'm like, man, Aiden is huge, you know, and I didn't realize that next year you're already in high school. Good grief. You're growing up fast, dude. And I say, I, I, last time I remember seeing at the racetrack, you know, I was not necessarily looking up to you. The next time I see you, I know I will be. <laughs> yeah. I still got those pictures from whenever we took pictures with you. It was me, my cousin, and then my mom, and we all took photos with you. Oh, yeah. We still got those. We still got those photos on your Instagram. Yeah, I had bleached hair, or like at least my front was bleached. <laughs> so I don't. I'm not even going to ask what position you play in hockey because I don't understand it. Other than center, I understand that. But what? What's your favorite position in baseball? Like, if you could just tell the coach, this is what I want to play. This is what I want to do. What is it? 100% first base. First base. Isn't first base like a lefty position? Are you a lefty? I'm a righty. I'm righty. He bats left-handed, but I mean, you can. You know, it's not necessarily true anymore. Like whenever I was in school, I'm left-handed and I played first base. And right. you didn't see right-handed first basemen. You know, it's it's pretty unheard of. But now you can look in the league, and, and you know, in the major league, and there's more right-handed first basemen than there are left-handed. You know, it's it's something. To, uh, I don't know. It's just changed. It's pretty weird. Yeah. Well, like I say, I'm quite a bit older than you are, Sean, but, but yes, people our age, you know, first base, that's the first thing I think of is lefty. Yep. And I'm impressed, Aiden, that you can bat left-handed because I'm telling you, I can't do anything left-handed. Like I, I just can't, it's not my thing. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'd almost argue with him because I know how much he likes to pitch, you know. So I don't know if he likes first base more than pitching, but he, he definitely seems happier when he's on the pitcher's mound. Yeah, that's for sure. I've seen pictures, and, and you can get stretched out. It's, it's impressive. It is impressive. Yeah. I see pictures. And it's cool. It is cool. Well, I'm going to ask your dad. He pitches for I, uh, I'm not running you off at all. You can hang out and, and, and listen, but I got to know about 187 Customs. I got to know okay. what a new shop, I guess, opened in the past year. Is that right? Yeah. It's probably about a year now? Well, it, yeah. We kind of had it a little bit before that. Uh, two years ago, we started a, a build, and we took it to SEMA. And pretty much we – we're 187 Customs then, but it's not like we were doing any kind of uh, promotion on it or anything like that. But we, it's just something that I've always enjoyed. You know, like I told you, we kind of started in a car show scene, you know, and it, and it evolved over to, oh, I enjoy old cars. I enjoy, you know what? I enjoy any cars. I, I'm, a, I'm a car enthusiast. It doesn't really matter what it is. If somebody has spent their, their time, their money, on something that they love and they enjoy, I'm a fan, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those deals. It doesn't matter to me. You know, you see the ricers running around and I don't care. I, I love imports. It doesn't matter to me, you know, cause, cause that person loves that car. And I'm not talking about putting stickers on something because that's rice. You know what I mean? I'm talking about you, you worked on this car, you built it up, you put aftermarket stuff on it that you enjoy and you love that car, you know, you can't hate on somebody else's passion, you know, and, and in my opinion, if you're a car guy, you're a car guy, you know, I, I, there's lots of things out there that I look at and go, that's gross, you know what I mean? But if that person loves it and enjoys it and they, they spent their money to make that happen and their time, then you got to be a fan of it. Man, I agree a hundred percent. I Again, back, you know, during this whole Corona thing, I have really watched a lot of YouTube. I mean, because, you know, there's no sports on TV, there's no racing, you know, so yeah. I've watched a lot of YouTube. And I started watching this this channel called PFI Speed, and it's, and it's a guy named Brett Levistad. I've, I've reached out to him. We've texted back and forth a little bit. And, and he's a tuner, and that's what he does is import cars out in the Denver area, and it is unfreaking believable in Denver, in mile high out altitude, he's got, you know, little four cylinder Hondas that, that they put turbos on over a thousand horsepower at the wheels. Yeah. How can you hate on that? You know, I you can't know. hate on that. 
Hey, but people still do it, you know? I mean, people will look at something like that and go, American muscle. Hey, and don't get me wrong. I love American muscle. You can see what I got. But, you know, you got to you, you still got to, to look at that stuff and and think about all the, the you know, it, it took a lot to make a thousand horsepower with four cylinders. You know what I mean? It takes a lot to make a thousand horsepower with eight cylinders, you know? So so you can, it's, it's tough to hate on somebody that's doing stuff like that, you know? I love it. You know, well, one of the best things I've ever done was whenever we went to Brazil for fuel tech and I went down there and I got the chance to drive that Opala as one of the coolest experiences of my life. You know, I've never been in that car before, never been in a, a stick shift car that, that I raced, you know, and there was all kinds of stuff that I had to learn in a short amount of time. And, and I made it happen, you know, and it was amazing. I'll, I'll never forget that forever. Yeah, high RPM, rubber up the clutch, that had to be a lot of fun. No doubt. I mean, I, I, I've been 335 miles an hour. I've been, you know, at the quickest man in the world. And I've done all that stuff. But I still have this want to drive something that you, you know, that's got a clutch in it, that you rev it to the rev limiter and drop the clutch. I've never done that. I mean, I've had four-speed muscle cars, but that's not the same as driving. Not at all. I, I've never done that. So, yeah. I would love to do that. You know, that was pretty cool. You got you, man, it, it was cool, you know, and, and we, we ran fours, you know, I went four seconds in that little car, you know, and uh, you know, I don't know how much kind of power it made, but it made 60 pounds of boost and what a 250 shot on top of it. You know, as soon as I put my foot to the floor and dump the clutch, it, it's making all the boost and 250 shot of nitrous on top of it, you know, and, and then just start rowing gears, you know, it was a Liberty. So I didn't use the clutch except to, to, to launch, you know, but it, it was, it was something amazing. That's for sure. And, and I definitely wouldn't mind building one of those cars one day. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to say, I'm impressed with them, no question about it. So before I finish up on 187 customs, I love the scout build, by the way, Donna is Forever, yeah. she's you sitting me, right over you here. You can give me that. She, she is. She's all the time like, man, we need to get a scout, you know. And of course, you know, you put a put put an LS in it. If I got one, I'd have to put a late model Hemi in it. I put an LS in it. It doesn't have. A, it, it has a four uh, BT Cummins in it. Actually, I'm gonna, right. actually, I'm gonna get in trouble for calling it a four BT because it's not a four BT. It's a common rail. So basically, it's the four BT, but it's got the better fuel system on it. So, right, right. and you know, it, it probably makes four or 500 horsepower and it's a lot of fun. So, I bet it is. So I bet it is. But y'all are doing customer cars. I mean, I see sitting behind you back there. It looks like, what is that? A Cadillac on the, on the roof back there. <clears throat> so you're doing customer cars yes. as well. <laughs> right now during this Corona stuff, we have been doing customer cars. Phantom's been uh, getting customer cars in here and uh, we're actually doing a, a cam swap and uh, full exhaust and everything on this car. So, you know, he, he's done a few of those and, you know, just kind of help, you know, keep the lights on, you know, while we're not doing anything. Absolutely. So you just mentioned Phantom. That was actually one of my questions. So yes. I, know, I, I know Phantom, I know who he is, but who is Phantom and what, and what does he do? You guys do a lot of work uh, together, but who is Phantom and what's he do? Definitely. Uh, Phantom is Danny Parker is his name and we can get him over here here in a minute, but he, uh, he, he started coming around. Uh, how long have I known you, Phantom? Yeah, see, I've never heard this story before, so I'm interested. Yeah, it's been every bit of 10 years. He started coming around. Oh, man, y'all froze up. Uh-oh. Can you? Uh-oh, y'all froze up, Sean. I don't know if you hear me. Can you text him? Dang, it's froze. I don't know if everybody can see me or not. We both froze. We are froze. This guy, this guy is just beating the hell out of this truck, you know, and and it was kind of like he, he's no different than us, you know. And so eventually we just kept on street and race street racing with him and we became friends, you know. So when it was time and, and he's one of those guys, unlike me, who knows a lot about the Internet, you know, and. I can't do anything on the internet. You know, I, I can, I can scroll and I can troll around just a little bit, but I'm not any good at it. I can't find things. Uh, I couldn't even set this deal up right here today to, to be on this show with you if I wouldn't have had him. So he, he's the guy, uh, he, he writes blogs for me. You know, he, he runs my Facebook pages. I still get on there and I still comment uh, with the fans, 
but as far as posting everything, that's what he does. You know, he, uh, he's the one that films everything that we film, you know, all of our YouTube stuff. Uh, it, it's, it's all him, you know, and, and not to mention, uh, he's my number one guy whenever we're racing the car too. So he's got a lot on his plate, you know? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, like I said, I know him, I know who he is and I basically have known him basically almost as long as I've known you and, yes. and he does a great job. And like I say, I was just bragging on your YouTube channel and I, I know that's who's filming it and putting it together. And, mm-hmm. and I have piddled a little bit with YouTube. It is a freaking ton of work to edit a video. Holy yeah. crap. And, and if, if you were filming me, it'd be a whole lot of editing, you know, because <laughs> there's, there's been lots of times where I get mad and yell at Aiden, we're under the car or something, you know, I mean, I think actually one time he cried. I made him cry. cry. No, no, no. I made him cry, you know, and, and I was like, oh man, man, you're going to have to cut this part out. You know, I feel bad. I made him cry, you know, <laughs> and, uh, so to me, you know, and, and I'm, I'm also the type of guy where, where I say whatever's on my mind, you know? So this whole live deal right now is, is not usually a good deal for me because a lot of times I'll stick my foot in my mouth and uh, on YouTube videos, we can, we can make me, you know, not say those things, you know, and I like to cuss a lot, you know, and, and I, it's, it's a habit that I've been trying to break. My wife is always telling me, stop it. You can't make those videos and cuss as much as you do, you know? And, even like right now, nothing but silence. I'm the guy that has the radio on all the time, you know, and and so that's that, that's that's another tough transition is is cussing, no radio in the background. You know, those are two hard things for me to to overcome, you know. But Phantom's pretty good at at telling me, hey, you got to do this, you know, and and sometimes I'll tell him, you got to make me do it, you know. I'm gonna come up with some reason or some excuse not to do that deal, you know, but. <laughs> He's been pretty good, and we butt heads sometimes. You know, I, I yell at him every once in a while, but but he knows whenever it's all said and done. Even the next day, I'll go, "My bad," you know, because <laughs> when we're you know, it is when you're I don't know how you are because you seem like one of the most calm, uh, uh, what is it, patient guys. All, all the qualities that I don't have, you know, because. <laughs> And things go wrong. I don't care who you are. When you're racing, things go wrong. And I feel like a lot of it is how you take things that go wrong. Well, I blow off the handle, you know, and I start cussing and I start yelling. I don't care who it is. I'm going to yell at everybody there, you know, and it's not it's not real good to do that. But Phantom knows how I am and he doesn't usually take it, you know, personally. Right, right. Which is a good thing. But I mean, you know. It is part of what we do. I mean, you know, I appreciate you saying all those nice things about me. Donna is sitting right over there shaking her head laughing, you know, because she hears it. You know, she'll hear it. And, yes, I do keep the smiley face on when I get beat. I don't kick the car, throw the helmet, none of that stuff. It's not my style. But she'll hear about it later. I'll be like, that. that whether I want to or not. Whether, yeah, exactly, whether she wants to or not. You know, I'll be like, that that uh, SOB held me up, you know, he burned me down or whatever. But I'm not going to say that when I know the cameras around or, or people around. I'll save that for her. But yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's sort of working together, you know, every now and then you just got to blow a little steam off and, and you just happen to do it no matter what. You know, <laughs> and, and it's almost uh, when when we're filming, you know, Street Outlaws. I mean, you got to be you. You know what I mean? You can't hold all that stuff inside like like your job. You know, you you, you hold all that stuff inside. If you did that on Street Outlaws, you wouldn't be a good character on the show. Right. You, know I mean? you you'd be labeled the nice guy. I mean, you'd be dominator. He's the nice guy. He never gets upset. He, he never. You know what I mean? He, he doesn't uh, he doesn't throw a fit. He, you know, he's just a nice guy all the time, you know, but that's who he is. You know, so and and the show multiplies who you are. So whatever your personality is, it multiplies that, you know, if you're an asshole to people. It's going to multiply that, too, you know, so. Hey, I'm I'm okay with being called. I'd be like Dominator because I like Dominator. He is a nice guy. He's a great dude. Great dude. He's one of the best people ever. And I could call him right now. It didn't matter what he's doing. And I could tell him, hey, man, I need your help. Hey, and he'd be here. Yeah. So, you know, that's pretty so you rare. Just, 
you just brought the show up and, and whatever. But my question is, and this really relates to me and you both a little bit. What is the most stressful part of your job? Calling the, the TV show, I assume that's really what your job is now. Like racing's my job. So, um, what, and this is a question that was sent on all the posts that we got. What do we find the most stressful for me and you both? What do you find the most stressful about it? Family life or racing? Well, my family does most of it with me. So I'm fortunate enough that, uh, my wife is right there by my side, no matter what I do, you know? So I trained her well in the beginning, you know, it's, it's all me, but I, I just finally wish me all this stuff, you know, and, and, and I, I really enjoy that, but I, I really feel like the thing that stresses me out the most, it's not the racing, it's not getting the car ready. It's not any of that. It's knowing when we're going to race. We don't have a schedule, you know? Right. So, and that makes uh, the MPK is a little bit different, I, and I haven't really done a season of MPK yet. I, I just did the one race, but other than this Corona deal, those things are set in stone. You know, wow. you're you're gonna race this weekend, and you have the whole schedule played out, and that's amazing. You know, but for, as far as the street stuff goes, we won't know if we're racing until the day before. You know, or if the weather's bad, then we'll cancel it. And, okay, we'll let y'all know when, you know. And then Monday they're talking about, okay, we're going to race Wednesday night. You know what I mean? Or it's just a, a whole lot changes. And I don't really know if it's anybody's fault or I don't really know. But there's there's just no set schedule of when we're going to race. And you can't really plan anything else in life. Because no matter what, I don't care if I have plans or not. If the production company calls me and says, we're filming this night, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. You know, like it's my job. And it's like I'm on call all the time. You know, they, they could call me right now and say, we need you in California with your car. And I'd be loading up. Yeah. I, I mean, that, that would definitely drive me crazy. I mean, for me, you know, non-corona time you know it's 24 races a year we typically do a couple of match races so for me i must say my most stressful part or maybe the part that i like the least it's not necessarily stressful it's just all the travel you know i mean because we travel a crazy amount you know i just mentioned 26 races and but besides that you know i have stuff i do with parts plus and you have different trips you got to go on different yeah. things yeah. so the travel probably for me is the worst part and and me too i'm lucky you know donna goes with me to all the races and and we drive to about half of them and we'll bring our crazy dogs with us you know and that's fun i enjoy that but uh definitely probably the most stressful part you know is just keeping things going you know i mean thank goodness for, there's that backwards camera thing thank goodness for parts plus you know i've had them for 10 years but for me, without the sponsors, I don't have a You know, no matter how much you win, you can't win enough to pay for a nitro car. That's you know, right. It just don't work that way. So for me, probably making sure that we maintain our partnerships with Parts Plus and all the sponsors that work with us, that's probably the most stressful part for me. But I love my job, though. I love my yeah. job. I don't, I don't so since you got that one out of the way, I had another question. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I, I, I just, I don't think that I could, I don't know how I would handle that because I don't, you know, I have people that help me out. I have companies that help me out, but as far as like sponsors go that help me pay for things, I don't have any of that, you know, uh, doing this MPK stuff. I've always been the type of guy where I don't run any stickers on my car either. You know, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll get you, I'll get you out there on my Facebook on, on all my social media stuff. I'll, I'll try to wear, you know, your shirts or your hats, but I've always been the guy who I, I don't run. It, 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 in my opinion, would kill the look of the car that I've, you know, created over all these years, you know, but at some point doing the NPK, it, it might be inevitable. You know, I don't have, I don't have spare engines. I don't have spare transmissions. I don't have all that stuff. And, and this year, and it's going to make or break me. It's going to be tough. Uh, like you said, traveling and going to all these places. I haven't done any of that yet. Uh, I do travel quite a bit for, for the show and, you know, just going to races and doing things. But 
the majority of the time we're local around here filming the show. So I haven't been in that situation yet. And I haven't been to an MPK race, blown the motor up and need to get it fixed or a new one put in it by next round or even the next race. I haven't been in those situations yet. So the, the, the one motor that I do have, I got to keep it happy, you know? Yeah. So what made, what made you decide to do MPK? I mean, where did that come from? Um, well, last year we, we were supposed to film 50 episodes of Street Outlaws. And I thought, wow, that's going to be crazy. And that, that's going to be all I want. You know what I mean? So like I said, those races are set in stone and they're going to do those races no matter what. So they would do those races. And then a couple of people would be broke the next weekend when we were going to go film on the street. Well, then all that street stuff kind of got put off and we ended up only filming four episodes all of last year. So I literally made not very much money. You know what I mean? Four episodes worth. And so when you go to MPK, it, it has certain things that just doing the street stuff doesn't have like fan interaction. You know, you can't, you can, when you go to those races, you get fan interaction. And if it's not, you know, like you, you know, as well as I do, if it's not for the fans, what do you got? You know yeah. what I mean? Without the fans, we're not going to get to live this life that we sit and complain about. You know what I mean? Or talk about how much we love, you know, either way you look at it, uh, the fans have to be there. So I really wanted to go and hit the MPK stuff so that we, you know, and, and, and in all that, you know, I'd like to sit and say it's all the fans. I'm doing it only for the fans, but we get to sell merch. You know, we don't do that stuff on the street, you know, and selling merch helps keep my car running. You know what I mean? It helps keep me competitive, you know, so selling merch, uh, you know, and I won't lie, you know, uh, I'll get paid at least enough to get me to those races, get me there and get me back. You know, I'm not uh, making a living off of the, the money that I'm making going to MPK. But if you add in all the other stuff and then if you find just a couple of sponsors here and there, which I haven't done yet, but then then, you know, you're talking about it, it makes things way easier, you know. Right. Right. So you got. The OG car and the new car, which now is a few years old, which I, the car is beautiful, by the way. Thank you. Uh, I said in the PRI, it's been a few years back when you brought that thing out, but yeah. and I can't reach the pedals. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But anyway, so I, I know from watching your YouTube channel, you've you've put the old the OG car back on small tire. Yes. So, do you have some plans to do some small tire races? Cause I, I know from watching that video, it looks like a ton of work to get the car swapped over to small tires. Mm -hmm. And the next part of that question is, so if you're doing NPK and you hurt the new murder Nova, is that an option? Can you run either car on the show street outlaws and not lose your spot on the list or what have you uh, on the street stuff? No, I can't. It, it's uh, the, the car, is the car and driver have to be the same for you to keep your spot. So as far as MPK goes, I mean, that's always an option. You know, I hate to put this thing back, you know, the OG back on a big tire because it doesn't work. There's a reason I built a new car, you know, and it's just not, it makes the power and it has good parts on it, but the chassis itself, it, it loves small tires. Uh, the way everything is designed all the angles and everything isn't right for that car to set on a big tire. <laughs> so it's, it, but it loves once, once you talk about the, the, the biggest problem, let me see. The biggest problem is that the motor in that car, the engine transmission combo is down in that car. And you really want them. One, 1.2 is what I is, is ideal up. Uh, on the on the angle of the transmission well mine's down so you take the big tire and it's way up here well that puts the drive shaft at a horrible angle so then you put a small tire on it and you actually move the rear end that's right here to down here and then it's a straight line 
That's the best way that I can explain that the OG is made for small tires. So it actually works a lot better and has been way faster on small tires than it probably will ever be on big tires. So um, we actually had plans on going to Huntsville and going to Radio Fest a couple of weeks back and it got canceled. Well, that race is actually next weekend now. So we're going to, we're going to go try to do it. You know, it's, it's, uh, I've been to the track before. It's a, it's an amazing radio track, you know, and, uh, we can't wait to get back out and do some radio racing. We, I, I love small tire racing. I, it's kind of like anything else. I like any racing, but getting to get back in the OG, it's like, you know, I've been in that car. I've been in that made thousands of passes in that deal you know it, it's definitely home to me you know and yeah. and uh we went out to fuel tech just last week or the week before and we upgraded that deal with with uh with all the the new fuel tech stuff and it made a bunch of power and we're ready to go put it on the track and see what we can do i was impressed uh i watched it that thing the og I don't know. I know it, it's, it's definitely your favorite, but for me, I love that car too. You know, it's just, you know, it, it, it made you famous, dude. That car is unbelievable. I mean, you have yeah. definitely done some amazing things. And so Huntsville, Alabama, I got, I got to tell you a quick story about that. So I don't remember what year this was. I'm the world's worst statistician, but I kind of got a, a, a fond place in my heart for Huntsville, Alabama. Back in my IHRA days when we were just crushing everybody, George Howard was a big race promoter, and he put up a $101,000 outlaw top fuel race, and uh, I won it. Wow. It paid $5,000 at Huntsville. At Huntsville. I, I drove a top fuel car at Huntsville. Wow. <laughs> and and uh, how much was it? Slowing down for the first time was definitely got my attention. Uh, my crew chief, Mike Clover, which was my crew chief back then, and he's my crew chief again now. They let everybody make a test pass. It wasn't a qualifying pass. It was a test pass. So we took full advantage of it. It's July 4th weekend. It is a million freaking degrees. So we were worried about just getting a hold of the racetrack. So we didn't have it hopped up at all. But still, the thing went fast. You know what I mean? It's a freaking top fuel car. It yeah, yeah. goes to the race track. I open the chute. Mom. He's in my ear. You know, how did it pull? Where did it feel this, this, and this? And I'm like, you got to give me a minute. I got to get this thing stopped. <laughs> you know? <clears throat> but yeah. I love Hunts. I say it paid five grand to be the number one qualifier and 101000 to win. And we won them both. So, uh, Huntsville, Alabama next weekend. Me and Donna might have to make a trip. We might have to come see you guys. Right. You're more than welcome. We'll, we'll all be there. Me, Aiden, Dad, Aaron, Phantom, we'll, we'll all be there. You know, and it's going to be a good time. It, it always is. I actually went uh, the fastest 60 foot ever in the OG there, you know, which still wasn't fast, you know. But for this heavy thing, you know, it was the fastest I had ever been by a long shot, you know. And and we ran well there. It's the first time I ever went a 40 in the car on a, on a radio. And, uh, you know, we were excited. So hopefully we can go back there and, you know, run a lot faster than that this time. Heck yeah. So we've almost had you on here for an hour. And I got to do something right quick. So every week that I'm doing this stuff, typically when me and Don are on the road driving, I let, I'll leave like what I call a fan appreciation pack. We'll hide something on the road and post it. And people go get some free stuff. Well, since we can't travel, I've been doing it on, on this live deal. I can't even get the box in there. So there's some stuff in here from TS, TMS Titanium, a bunch of Denso stuff. And, and, and my favorite thing that's in here, except for the Denso stuff, is, is a little dragster. Man, I'm having trouble finding that camera. So the whole time we've been on here, the whole time we've been on here, Donna has been putting names into a random name generator. And I'm going to flip this around. Whoever's name pops out of this random generator is going to win all this stuff. And we're awesome. going to see who it is. So we've been doing this every week. It's fun. So Chad Brandy Baxley. Chad Brandy Baxley. If you're still watching this, if you're still watching this, send me a message of your address and you just want a box full of cool stuff. 
it's just something fun we do, and we have I'm had sure. a pile of coal. We've had a pile yeah, of coal. Like that. I'm, I'm, I'm actually planning a trip this weekend. I'm not real sure. I'm not going to say a whole lot because – I'm not 100% sure about it yet. I mean, I'm going, but where we're going, I'm not sure how legal it is or anything like that, but it is a race, you know, and so we are going to uh, jump in my 75 Caprice convertible, my donk, and we are going to travel halfway across the country in that, and we're going to be doing some, some live feeds and stuff like that, and that would be cool for us to stop at a couple of places and and hide some stuff, you know, and yeah. let the fans find it. Yeah, just put it yeah. in a ziplock bag. Me and Donna have been doing that the last few years. It is so much fun, and we just put it put it in a ziplock bag in case it gets rained on or whatever. And you know, we just make a quick little video. It's like, hey, you know, we're at such and such truck stop, and I, you know, put it on top of the gas pump or whatever, you know, wherever you're at, and it's like. You know, and my little tagline in, I write a little note and put in there, you know, find it, share it, post it. That way we know who somebody found it. And I think it's just fun. Yeah. You know, it gives something to do. And especially when you're driving, you know, you're kind of trying to fill your time up on your trip. You know, that's, that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. cool. But guys, man, I really appreciate y'all doing this. Aiden, Sean, Phantom, thank you guys. This was a lot of fun. No doubt. And, uh, Maybe, maybe I'll see you. Maybe I'll see you guys in Huntsville. Man, hey, that'd be cool. You, you're more than welcome to come hang out with us, and uh, and we'll have a good time for sure. And I've got to get back to one of your races at some point. You know, uh, this time, this time uh, I'll bring some shoes instead of the sandals that I wore on the starting line with you last time. Uh, there's a few people that frowned on that. You know, I don't I don't see what the deal is, <laughs> but. Uh, you know, I, I might have learned a little bit since the first time I came out with you to that race, you know, about, uh, you know, how I act in public and things like that. You know, it's, it's bound to get better, you know. So we definitely want to come out and watch you race. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll get a chance. But hopefully this stuff's going to quit pretty soon and we're all going to get back to it. We're going to we're going to start uh, filming Street Outlaws on the show again, you know, the original show. So. I definitely wanted to mention that, though, that the fact that we're not done, our show's not over, we're still doing it. We just, uh, you know, and everybody's like, when are you going to be back on TV? Well, we got to we gotta film the stuff first. So we're definitely still filming the stuff. We have a couple more seasons that are for sure already bought, already, you know, got the green light on doing them. We just have to do them. So... Uh, we're not going anywhere anytime soon, you know, so we're still going to do that and we're still going to do the MPK and uh, we'll be back on TV. Man, I, I can't wait. Again, my buddy Jason calls me every Tuesday, wakes me up and uh, he loves y'all show. And, and obviously I do, too. And Huntsville, I'm not kidding. And I'll, I'll just tell you this. I went to a, a match race. Lutz is like, hey, I'm, I'm doing this match race. This is a few years ago. Come hang out with me. I left there covered in oil, head to toe. The dude just put me smooth, straight to work, lashing valves, cooling transmission off, you know, and he was hanging out drinking, you know, Diet Pepsis. That's what he was doing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. One after another. <laughs> well, guys, thank you, and uh, we'll holler at you guys soon. Thank you very much. Good to see you, man. Hopefully see you soon. Absolutely.